Early voting begins tomorrow, and there are two big items on the ballot affecting Houston. There's the controversial Houston Equal Rights Ordinance. Opponents of the ordinance say they don't want men who perceive themselves as female entering women's restrooms. But HERO supporters say the ordinance is about eliminating discrimination and protecting rights. Also, Houston voters must pick a new mayor to lead the city, and it is a crowded field of seven on the ballot. The big items on the ballot for Houston voters is our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you. You can weigh in on our Fox 26 Facebook page or on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our panel led by our senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, our news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Bally. Good morning, guys. Good morning. All right, things are certainly heating up in the mayor's race. We're seeing verbal attacks between the candidates who are really trying to grab that second spot in the likely runoff. They sure are heating up. And let me tell you where things are really heating up. That's Huntsville. Texas where the best, <laughs> university, I forgot, I forgot. the best university in Texas beat up on Abilene Christian last night. Now that means we now own every major religion, Jack, uh, uh, Sally. And we another have, orange tie. Another can be orange worn tie. Today. So there right. we go. All right. So let's talk about this. The hero ordinance is, is, uh, is, is the biggest issue in Houston for this election and probably Mustafa is hero driving uh, the, the election. I, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, I think the mayor's race is going to drive the election because that's where the most amount of money is spent and we're electing a leader possibly for the next six years. So um, I think that's where it is. But, but there is a lot of energy and conversation around Hero. And sometimes those divisive conversations, rather than driving people to polls, drive them away from it. You sh we've seen recently that the anti-Hero so people have, have spent almost all of their money. We've gotten some infusions um, you're have of have capital over the last hit. few weeks. But they were almost out of money while the pro-hero people had over a million dollars. And you're seeing the pro people now come out with ads and the polls are changing. Yeah, and, and the dynamics are usually like that. So usually the anti-campaigns are, are a group of few people that spend money early. And then the, 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 the people that are usually for something, by the time they build consensus to build a bigger tent, and they start raising money and bulk of it gets spent. This is not that unusual. What about that, Jackie? We saw the poll change from two weeks ago where we, you and I were saying if the election were today, Hero would pass, a fail, and now the polls are saying more people are in favor. Yeah, and the polls are also saying that they have not looked at one large base, which is the black base. And the black vote will be very important with uh, not only the mayoral race, but also with the Equal Rights Ordinance. Um, a lot of the people who are opposing the Equal Rights Ordinance are doing it based on their religious beliefs. And of course, we do know a large majority of black people are very religious. And we have seen that black pastors, a large number of them are against the ordinance. So the polls are not, um, they have admitted that uh, the black vote were not included in a lot of, or black population were not included in a lot of the polls with this particular ordinance when they were polling um, the Equal Rights Ordinance. And I think the black population will really be an indicator of what happens. I haven't it. seen that data that she's talking about. Is that true? Well, look, I mean, I mean, the, I, I, I've, I've looked at the polls and, and, and from what I understand, they try to weigh them based on what's the likely turnout. And people may look at it a little bit differently. For the most part, most polls that, that are uh, credible have, have a, a, you know, some logic in terms of what the turnout should be. But whether you know, it's African Americans, Latinos, Asians, if you look at any, any of the protected classes that are part of this ordinance, they do see protections in it for themselves. And so what, what you're likely to see as consensus builds, as more money spent, more educations happen, that people are going to see that this is an important ordinance for the future of Houston, and they're likely to vote for it. Let's talk about the return of the mayor's race for a minute. Sylvester Turner's clearly going to make the runoff, and, and, and now we're looking at Adrian Garcia had been in the lead. He's coming in the next hour. But Bill King's surging. Yeah, Bill and, King's And surging. so who's going to make that runoff? Is it going to be Adrian or is it going to be Bill I'm going to give him the social I'm media cue about If you look at past seconds. history, it's always been a, a moderate or a li uh, someone to the left and someone to the right. Two minutes. So it would make sense based on that pattern in Houston that it would be Bill King. Uh, Bill King has a defined audience with uh, those who are more conservative thinking, a more conservative base. Uh, I've always been in the school of thought that um, Adrian activists. and Sylvester same t share too much of the same pool. 
And uh, the polls are indicating that as well, because you are seeing a surge with Bill King, and you are seeing uh, con more conservatives rallying around Bill King's message. I want you to respond to that, but I've got to go to Sally right now. We're going to go to social media and see what's going on over there. Okay, we're going to take a look at some of the latest tweets from the two candidates you're just talking about, Bill King and Adrian Garcia. Uh, King says, I do not support the HERO ordinance as it is currently written. No Houstonian is in favor of discrimination, though. Adrian Garcia says he supports HERO. It's important to take a stand on an issue and then you're seeing some of the verbal attacks now between these two candidates bill king says uh, that garcia's sheriff's office only solved 10 percent of rapes worst in the nation he also says that he's avoiding answering difficult questions and uh then garcia pointing out that uh that he, that putting more police on the street which he did as sheriff is the best crime yes, deterrent and he's going to go after violent crime and he also is questioning bill king's record and he says he's proud of his 35-year record of public service so you're definitely seeing it heating up between those two candidates and, and that's exactly where i was going next because you're seeing uh sylvester being left alone because he's so far in the lead and everyone's attacking it really everyone's attacking adrian garcia to knock him out of that second place slot and that's what Bill King's doing right now. Yeah, look, it, it's, it's the mayor's race for the fourth largest city and the largest city in Texas and the largest city in the South. It is going to be competitive. It's, a, it's an open seat. So you're going to see conversation back and forth. But as Jackie said, when you look historically, um, last election cycle when Anise Parker ran, there was no credible Republican candidate on the ballot when they were running. It was, it was basically three Democrats that were competing for the race. 60% of the voters are lean Democrats. So it, it's, it, it's, that's, the, that's the history yeah, of Houston. Um, it is not necessarily a Republican versus de Democrat. It is a nonpartisan race, but soon. the city leans to the left. But that's why I said conservative versus right. not left, because um, Gene Locke was seen as more conservative than Anise. Bill is seen as more conservative than Adrian. Adrian is now attacking Bill as, as, as Bill is rising in the polls, right. which is an indication that he realizes Bill is rising in the polls. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Coming up, coming up in just about 20 minutes, we're going to talk you. about some propositions on the ballot. Okay, we look forward to that. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you then. We're going to send it over to Lindsay now for a check of the forecast.